At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in, who in, who is in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, in the early church, sinners were sprinkled with ashes and, and sackcloths were put on them as a sign of mortification. They were sent into a period of prayer and penance, after which they were welcomed back after their public repentance and confession. They were brought back to the community and they were part of the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. During the Middle Ages, during 9th or 10th century, th this practice had disappeared. And by now, the entire community were smeared with ashes as a sign of repentance, of mortification. At the beginning of this season of Lent, of 40 days of prayer and fasting, as we prepared for this great celebration of the Paschal Mystery of Christ, the resurrection, the feast, the great feast of the resurrection. But one may ask, how come Ash Wednesday? Why not Ash Monday or why not Ash Friday? Friday seems to be a more significant day. But why Ash Wednesday? Well, you see, earlier, Lent was for six weeks, so that made 42 days. But then if you remove Sundays, six Sundays out of those 42 days, Sundays were always meant to remind the church of the resurrection of Christ. So if you remove those six Sundays from 42 days of Lent, you had only 36 days. Now in order to make it 40, to signify those 40 days that Jesus went into the wilderness, as he fasted and prayed, four days were added to those six weeks of Lent. And that's why we begin the season of Lent on Wednesday. And then we begin with the celebration or the ritual of smearing ash on our forehead. And that's why we begin the season of Lent on Wednesday or on Ash Wednesday. But what is the significance of Ash Wednesday? My dear friends, these readings today are clear and direct. Prophet Joel reminds his people, invites them to come to repent for their sins and beg for God's mercy. He says, come to the Lord fasting and praying, doing penance. He says, tear not your clothes, but your heart, rend your heart. In other words, he's saying, let your repentance be true, just not a ritual, but rather 
truly come to God acknowledging your sinfulness and asking for God's mercy. And Paul reminds us in the second reading that this is God's anointed time. That God has set this time for you, has made way for you and for me so that we may come back to him with true repentance. In other words, the purpose of season of Lent is to help us to mend our relationship with God and with one another and with ourselves. It's all about coming back to God. That's the most important reason for this season of Lent. And that's why Jesus in the Gospel today reminds us how to do it, how to come back to God, how to once again help God restore this relationship. He teaches us how and how not to pray, fast and give alms. Because Jesus is trying to make a contrast between those Jews who made it a show, a ritual, rather than being genuine about those practices. And he would tell his disciples, you shall not be like them. And that's why when he speaks about almsgiving, he would say, those hypocrites will do it for a show, but it shall not be so for you. You shall give it in secret. Those hypocrites will fast and, and put a gloomy face so that they would be appreciated by people. They would be considered religious. They would be considered pious. But you shall not do so. Your penance will be seen in secret by your father and he will reward you. And so you shall do with your prayer as well. That you shall not stand to pray to the father as a show to others. No, but you shall do it because you want to make that connection with your father. So to go into your room in secret and pray. But one may wonder, where in another place Jesus says, let your light shine and when people see your good deeds, they will praise your father. It seems to be in contrast. On one place Jesus is saying, let your good deeds be seen. Here is saying, do it in secret. Well, my dear friends, we need to recognize this. When it comes to our spiritual practices, especially during the season of Lent, there are two levels. One, as a community, and another at the personal level. As a community, we all come together to celebrate the season of repentance, as it were. But together we practice certain things. Like, for example, the smearing of ashes. We all do it. We acknowledge that as a community, we are in need of God's mercy. It's a public gesture. We all have, we all put the sign of the cross with ashes on our forehead. We go ahead into our workplaces, into our, wherever we are. And people see that, that we are in this season of penance. Even there are days of obligation, like for today and, and on Good Friday, we are obligated to fast and abstain. It's again a public gesture. It is to show that as a community we are preparing for this great Paschal mystery. But there is another aspect of this season of Lent, of our spiritual practices, which is personal. And perhaps that's what Jesus is indicating when he's speaking about almsgiving or when he's speaking about prayer and fasting. That we personally prepare ourselves to be united with God. There are certain things that we decide for ourselves personally because only we know where we have sinned. It is only in the depth of our heart we know that so often we are just wearing a mask for people to see. We are hiding all our flaws as much as possible. And only God can see. And therefore, it is only in our secret of our heart could we go with true repentance to God and say, God, I'm sorry. And I want to change. And in order to change, I want to do my penance. And that's why the temptation would be, you know, to make... Sometimes we hear people making their Lenten penances apart from what is prescribed by the church. The danger is, if you just make it a Catholic fad, you know, it's fashionable to give up something and we tell everyone we are doing so. And sometimes we also kind of feel good about it. Well, I'm a good Christian, so I'm doing this. Well, that's exactly what the purpose of personal penance is not. It's not supposed to make us feel good about ourselves. 
Our personal penance is supposed to help us to recognize that we are flawed. We do penance not because we are good people, we are religious people. We do our penance because we know we have sinned. And we want to help God and His mercy to work in our hearts, to train our souls to, rend, to separate from those enticements of the world, the pleasures the world provides, and to remind ourselves that I live, as Christ said, not by bread, but by every word that comes from God. Second temptation would be sometimes we may use penance as, as a test of our, our strength, how, how strong we are in order to refrain from certain things, to prove ourselves unconsciously or consciously that, well, I can do it. Jesus did not go into the wilderness for, for 40 days to, do, to prove how strong he was. No, rather he went to train himself in order to obey God's word. That's why he says, man does not, he struggles as we see. But finally he says in the, during his temptations that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the Father. Dear friends, as we take on this journey during this season of Lent. Let us be sincere. That's one thing that Jesus is asking all of us. Let us be sincere. That we may not get caught with a ritualistic practice of the season of Lent. We have many things that we that we celebrate together. We have Stations of the Cross. We have Lenten Mission. We have so many other practices to help us as a community to come together. But let these community celebrations help us to go deep down into our hearts, to recognize our flaws, to recognize our sinfulness and in sincerity to come to God and say, God, I want to change. God, I want to repent. God, I want to come back to you. Help me. I'm ready to do my personal penances only between you and me so that when I come to that final week of the Holy Week that I may truly celebrate being united with you in your resurrection, in the new life that you give us. And therefore, today as those ashes are put on our forehead. As we, as the priest or the one who puts the cross on our forehead with ashes, when he says, repent and believe in the gospel, let us take those words into our hearts. Amen.